Okay. So, first question, why would you want to map data, and how can mapping data be useful for your Drupal site? Well, first and foremost, it's about accessibility. Nowadays, it's not enough to know what you're doing. We want to know where you're doing it, and you want a visual representation of that. If you're just listing an address on your website, people are just going to open another tab and enter that information into Google Maps, so cut out the middleman. Um, there's also been a big technological shift towards collecting uh, information about your location. And a lot of major web services, you see Foursquare, Yelp, Facebook, etc., are all mapping data and using your location and that uh, type of thing. Also, with the advent of more advanced browsers and GPS-enabled mobile devices, um, people can know where you are at all times. And there's many different use cases. No matter what industry you're working in, there's always a benefit in having a store locator or having an event locator and people being able to know where your stuff is happening. Um, there's a lot of different contributed modules in Drupal that uh, deal with mapping and producing maps. Um, for a good rundown of the most popular ones and a comparison of their different features, um, use this link up here. There's a whole discussion on different mapping modules. Um, and these mapping modules uh, leverage some external services to actually generate the maps. Um, a bunch of common ones are the Google Maps API. There's also Yahoo and Bing Maps. Uh, Open Layers by default uses OpenStreetMaps, but it also uh, there are a few modules that extend its functionality to provide integration with Mapbox and some other map services. Um, there's also an entire uh, Drupal user group dedicated just to location and mapping, um, and that can be accessed through this URL down here. So no matter what uh, mapping modules you choose to look into, they all follow the same basic paradigm, which is basically you need some field to hold your geodata, which will be uh, coordinates that a map can use to plot, uh, to plot. And then you need some sort of module or service to actually render the map with that geodata. Um, the most common way of doing this would be to display it in a view. So the first mapping module we're going to talk about is Google Store Locator. If you're just looking for the fastest way to plot points on a map, or if you're new to Drupal, um, this module is probably the one you're going to want to use. Um, it's very straightforward, and it gives you everything you need out, like right out of the box, ready to go. And you don't really need to know how the dependent modules work in order to use it. So um, there's the URL to download it. Um, like I said, it's ready to use right out, of the block, right out of the box. It doesn't require any previous knowledge of dependent modules, um, but we'll get into those later when we talk about leaflet and open layers. Um, and so it gives you a preset content type, which is what you'll use to uh, actually plot your locations on the map. Um, and I have a demo set up, so we'll go ahead and look at that. OK. So what the Google Store Locator gives you, it gives you one uh, configuration page where you can kind of specify some things for your map. Um, you can give the page a title. Uh, there's a search box that it comes with, and you can customize what it says how many stores to show, and then the default latitude and longitude and zoom level that you want your map to zoom in on. And then you can upload a custom marker icon for your store locations. And then if we go under structure, we can see that upon enabling the module, it gives you this uh, store location content type. And that's basically what you use to add all your stores. Um, so I went ahead and added a store. And so on the node edit page, all it is is uh, gives you an address and then some miscellaneous properties, like a phone number and a website. And then once you've added a few store locations, um, go to your site slash store locator and then you can see that it already generates a map for me. And I didn't have to do any configuration beyond that one configuration page. And it uses Google Maps, so 
It's pretty nice, and most people are familiar with the interface. Oops. And all the information you entered, like the description, the phone number, and all that, uh, appears in a pop-up. And what's also nice is you get this store locate, uh, this search bar on the left. So you can enter your location, and then Google will automatically center it on that. There are no stores in Chicago, but the closest one is in Orange County. Well, that's not very helpful. So yeah, that's Google Store Locator uh, in a nutshell. Like I said, very straightforward, um, but it's kind of a very, very strict use case. So if you're fine with if you're fine with using that content type um, and using Google Maps, then it's definitely the way to go. It's very easy. Um, but if you want more customization and flexibility with your maps, um, we'll have to delve a little deeper into exactly what makes mapping and mapping modules tick. Um, so the dependencies for these modules are all uh, pretty related. Um, they use a lot of the same fields. So address field, geocoder, and geo field will go into. Libraries, also a no-brainer since we're going to be leveraging external libraries like Leaflet and Open Layers. Um, Use GeoJSON is that one. I don't really know much about, but you need it for Google Store Locator. Did that. Okay. So, uh, following the paradigm I talked about earlier, we're going to need to use a field to store our geo data, and then this will allow us to um, to map any entity because uh, entities can have fields. So you can map users, taxonomies, and most likely content types. So there's where it is on Drupal.org. So it's a field that stores geodata that's usable by a map. Um, and there's three main types of geodata that you can use. The most common one would be a point. Um, but you can also map lines and polygons if you want to cover a specific area. Or for example, you want to map a bike route or something like that. So GeoField has two dependencies, ctools, which you probably already have installed anyway. And then GeoPHP. Um, GeoPHP by itself doesn't provide any extra functionality, but what it does, it's a, it allows us to integrate with the GeoPHP library, which is a PHP-based library that allows us to uh, move between different uh, formats for geodata. And I'll get into those formats right here. Um, so there's a few different widgets that you can use for GeoField to add geodata. The first one is using a bounding box, which basically just gives you four lat-long text fields where you enter the latitude and longitude manually. Um, you can also use well-known text, which is a markup language specifically for plotting vector geometry on a map. Um, you can draw directly on the map uh, using either leaflet or open layers, and you can draw points lines and polygons and what have you. Um, GeoField also has an HTML5 geolocation <laughs> widget, which works for newer browsers like Chrome and uh, GPS-enabled mobile devices. Um, but for most use cases, uh, these aren't very user-friendly, so you probably want to be able to geocode geo from a more user-friendly field, like an address field. Um, and GeoField provides really nice integration with the GeoCoder module, which will allow us to have one field for our address field and then calculate uh, the latitude and longitude for that into our GeoField. So moving back to our example, I created my own content type because I didn't want to use the store location uh, to go through adding these fields. So I created an event content type. If we go in here, we can see I added an address field and then added a location field. Um, you pick what field it geocodes from, and then you can also pick which service to use to geocode it. Um, it's really up to you. Certain services have usage limits, um, so keep that in mind when you're choosing which uh, service to geocode with. And there's some other settings, like the default geometry type. We'll just use point. And all that looks good. 
geocoding is like just taking an address and turning it into a launch with that Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's actually going to use well-known text, but it's the same concept. It's just turning, turning user-friendly information into information that the mapping modules can actually use to plot coordinates. Um, okay. So the next mapping module that we're going to get into is Leaflet. Um, Leaflet is very lightweight. It uses the Leaflet JavaScript library to generate uh, interactive maps where you can drag and move around, um, and it gives you some controls. It's very straightforward to set up. So all you have to do, um, the dependencies, libraries, so we can use the Leaflet library, C tools, entities, views, all stuff that you should have enabled on your site anyway. And now let's go into a demo. So the way that we're going to display our, actually, hold on. So we can use uh, the Open Layers library to display where our event is um, on the node page. So if we go into our content types display settings, you can see I've set the format for our location to leaflet. And then there's some options in here. You can choose what kind of map it uses. Um, like I mentioned, out of the box, leaflet uses OpenStreetMaps. Uh, for the type of map it renders, but with other modules, you can extend it to use other types of maps. Um, you can give it a custom map icon if you want. Uh, we'll leave that how it is. And then so if we go and view our event, you can see it gives us this nice open street map, the default marker. And now if we want to plot multiple points on the same map, we're going to render our geo data through a view. Um, and so all you have to do is, so you create a view, and all you have to do is set the format to leaflet map. And then in the settings, you um, add, a field, add your geo field to the fields and then set your geo field as the data source. Um, and then the title field and description content will appear in a pop-up box. So you can configure what fields it uses there, or you can render the entire entity if you want. Um, you can set the map height and some other stuff. And that's really all you have to do. Um, unfortunately, the preview doesn't work with a lot of the mapping modules, so you can't see what it's doing. Uh, while you're configuring the view. But if we go to the map that I already created, so there's our view. It automatically centers around uh, the points that you've plotted. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can see we have our two events on our map. And that's pretty much all that Leaflet can do right out of the box, but there's a bunch of different modules that can provide extra functionality depending on what you need. Um, leaflet marker cluster, if you have a group of entities that are all together on the map and you're zoomed out enough, it'll just show one, uh, one marker and it'll be a cluster. A uh, leaflet widget for geofield, like I said before, you can, uh, for your geofield widget, you can draw lines, dots, and polygons directly on the map using uh, Leaflet as your map if you install that module. Leaflet More Maps, which gives you access to other types of map services. Leaflet Mapbox, integration with Mapbox, Google Maps, GeoJSON. Um, Leaflet Labels gives you uh, better looking labels for your pop-ups. And those are all the extensions listed on the Leaflet Drupal page, but there are other ones. Okay. Now, the most useful, most flexible, but a little harder to learn mapping module that we're going to talk about is open layers. So the main thing that separates open layers from Leaflet and Google Store Locator is that maps are their own objects. 
Whereas with leaflet, you're making a call, like an API call to, I think it's leaflet map render, and then you're passing it your parameters of like an object of all the different points you want to plot on the map. Instead, with open layers, you just create a map. You can configure it with behaviors, uh, the default place where you want it to be zoomed in on, et cetera. And then your geodata is placed on top of the map in a data overlay. And that's where the name open layers comes from. Um, so these are a few dependencies, uh, pretty straightforward, PHP, latest version, libraries, Pro4.js, which uh, allows integration with different projections, C-tools, views, and then once again, GeoPHP. Um, so there's a, there's a lot more options with open layers, so it's a little harder to learn at first, um, but there's a step-by-step -step guide at this URL, and that's basically what I'm going to walk through right now. Um, so the basic steps are create an open layers data overlay, display and views, and then go and create your open layers map, and then enable your overlay on that map. So going back to here, go to structure. So first, create an open layers data overlay, and in the settings, give it a map data source. So we're going to use well-known text, and then the field that it's getting the well-known text information from is our location field. And then similar to Leaflet, we'll give it a title and a description, which will be used in a pop-up uh, if we enable that behavior. And then once we've done that, go to structure, open layers, we'll go to our maps. And so because maps are configurable objects, you can, uh, if you really like a map, you can import and export it from site to site. And you can use different map services on the same site, um, just make different maps. So here are all the different uh, options you can configure. You can give your map a default, uh, default bounds to center in on. Uh, these are all the different services that uh, open layers can use to generate maps. So you have all your Google Maps, MapQuest, Bing, OpenStreet, and Mapbox. And then here's where you enable the different layers that can appear on that map. So as you can see, I have uh, two different data overlays. Um, and I'll get into what those are. So basically, what separates this from Leaflet is that you can have different types of markers. So say that you wanted to plot different content types on your map and have them have different markers. Or if you want to have different markers per taxonomy term, Open Layers allows you to do that. Next thing you configure are behaviors, and there's a whole slew of different behaviors you can have for your map. So you can have keyboard controls, um, a layer switcher, which allows you to turn on and off different layers. Um, navigation tools, pan and zoom tools, um, pop-ups, and a bunch of other ones. Lots of different configurable options with open layers. And then in order to display our open layers, um, we're going to leverage views. So we'll go back to our view. Actually. So then this is what our open layers map looks like. Um, so I created two data overlays for our two different content types, our uh, store location and our event. And then I gave them different, uh, different icons. If you want to use a custom icon, the easiest way to do that is to um, add a field and add a, like a custom text field and have that field be the path to your marker. And then 
uh, in the style field, you can specify that field as your source for your uh, marker style. Um, so there's a few different modules that can extend open layers functionality, but a lot of them are still in development. Um, open layers icon styles gives you uh, better integration with different icons. Um, open layers taxonomy. So we had uh, a use case where we had to plot different uh, different markers depending on taxonomy term onto a map. And what we ended up doing is just creating a different data overlay for each taxonomy term. Um, but what Open Layers Taxonomy does is you create one uh, data overlay, and then you pass it the taxonomy term as a contextual argument, and then that allows you to just use one data overlay and have different markers for uh, different taxonomy terms. Um, open Layers External Block Switcher takes that. Uh, takes this thing and allows you to display it as a separate block. Um, and then there's a few other ones uh, that are still in development, but one example that I saw was uh, Open Weather Map, which gives you another type of map to display that can give you weather information. And that's all I got. Sped through that. Um, there's two other KWAL presentations today. They save the best for last. Uh, so you can check out Drupal 8 Overview with Patrick at 1.30. And our CEO, Kevin, will be giving another presentation at 2.30. And that's it.